We just want to thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, your mercy, your love, the things you are doing for us, the things you want us to do, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to hear you. We want to do the things you're calling us to do. We want to be your disciples. We want to love you, Lord, and tell you, Lord, that we can't do without you, Lord. Lord, we just want to praise you, Lord, for who you are and what you've been doing for us, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for getting up this morning, Lord, praising you, Lord, telling you, Lord, that we thank you, Lord. Lord, we just want to ask you, Lord, to be with us, Lord. Don't throw us away. Don't shoo us out, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Keep us, Lord, connected with you, Lord. Lord, we need you every moment, Lord. We can't do without you, Lord. Lord, you just showed us, Lord, so many things to do. And, Lord, we want to be with you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Grant it, Lord, everything, the Lord, that we have, Lord. Lord, we want to bless all our pastors, all our bishops. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. First Lady, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, have it so, Lord, they'll have everything they need, Lord. Give them, Lord, worship, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just want to grant it, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we want to ask the Lord, show us, Lord, what to do, Lord. We want the Holy Spirit to live in us, Lord. Lord, give us what you need, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Show us what you need, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We can't do this thing by ourselves, Lord. Lord, we just want to show you, Lord, how we love you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We want to give the money, Lord, that you want us to give, Lord. We want to type, Lord. We want to show you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord. Have it so, Lord, that our bodies, Lord, can be healed, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Everything, Lord, that's going on in when we know, Lord, that you are a deliverer, Lord. And we want you to deliver us, Lord, from anything, Lord, that's in it, Lord, that shouldn't be there, Lord. Lord, we want you to show us, Lord, how to do it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Praise you and give you the honor. Lord, we just want to love you. We want to praise you. We want to give you, Lord, everything you deserve, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. For he is truly greater than anything, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify your name, God. We honor you this morning, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. What's bigger than you, what's stronger than you, it don't exist, it don't exist. What's more powerful or in control, it don't exist, it don't exist. Who else can rescue me, supply all my needs, they don't exist, they don't exist. Who else can save my soul and make me whole? They don't exist because you are greater than anything. Hallelujah. Help us worship this morning. You are greater than anything. We serve a God that's bigger than anything. You are greater. than you what's stronger than you it don't exist it don't exist what's more powerful or more in control it don't exist it don't exist who else can rescue me supply all my needs they don't exist they don't exist who else can save my soul and make me whole they don't exist Cause you are greater, you're greater than anything, you're greater than anything, Lord, you're greater than anything, you're greater, you're greater, you're greater, you're greater, you're greater, you're greater, hallelujah, you're greater, 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 you're greater
You're my healer, redeemer, strong tower, my everything, defender, way maker. You're my savior, you're my every, my healer, redeemer. He's a strong tower. special in this house today yes God show us things that we've never seen before yes God thank you hallelujah blow my mind blow my mind thank you Jesus blow my mind 
the impossible. Blow my mind. Blow my mind. We want to see your hand, Lord. Blow my mind. Blow my mind, God. Blow my mind. To the impossible. Come on, lift your hands. Say, blow my mind. Blow. We want to see miracles. We want your hand, God. Blow my mind. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. I can't imagine what you have in store. Eyes haven't seen. Eyes have not seen. Neither ears heard. Never done before, yeah. Blow my mind. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Blow my mind, God. Blow my mind. Blow my mind, God. Blow my mind. Blow my mind. We need you today, God. God can do anything. Yes, he can. God can do anything. God can do anything. Yes. God can do anything. There's nothing too hard for him. God can. God can do anything. There's nothing too hard for you, God. God can do anything. If you trust and believe, God can do anything. You can see miracles, yes, you can. God can do anything. There's nothing too hard for God. God can. God can do anything. He can. He can pick you up. He can turn you around. God can do anything. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard. He can do whatever He wants. Whatever He wants, God can do anything. Oh yes, He can. God can do anything. Yes, he can. Yes, God can do anything. Whatever your ailment, whatever your sickness whatever or disease, God can do anything. God 
on your mind and we're going to use our faith this morning and we're going to say that our God can't do anything the Bible says with man it's impossible but with God all things are possible so we don't even have to be something bad you can say God you can turn my business around God you can restore this relationship God you can heal my friend we serve a God that can do anything so we declare it this morning I want you to look at your neighbor and I want you to tell your neighbor, my God can do anything. My God can do anything. He can heal your baby. He can save your soul. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. He still performs miracles What's today. Yes, he does. If you want an example, look at Roslyn. Look at the bag. We thought she wasn't going to live, but God can do release your face this morning as our pastor comes I want you just to chant that God can do anything when that situation cross your mind I want you to tell the devil my God can do anything see I don't care what it looks like I don't care what 
what it feels like. God can do Watch anything. He's working God behind the scenes. That's our God. He can do anything. Watch anything. 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 Whatever you need, He can do anything. Hallelujah, Jesus. Good morning. I'm standing here to let you know that our Bike to School giveaway will take place on Saturday, August the 13th. There will be Bike to School supplies given away, as well as a lot of fun and activity on that day with bounce houses, a walk, and some other things. You can help us out. We need your donations. Backpacks, paper, pen, pencil, crayons, glue, all of the supplies that the kids need, we have the baskets out front in the vestibule. You can bring them during any of the services. Also during the week, if you're available to bring them between the hours of 9 and 12 a.m. across the street to the multipurpose building. We greatly appreciate your participation. Yes. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He is worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. And I don't know about you, but if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. If that is your testimony, come on and put those hands together and give your God a hand clap of praise in this place. Oh, come on, Zion. I said, come on, Zion. You ought to put them hands together and give God a praise. I said, give God a praise. I said, give God a praise. Oh, you ought to set up a praise that'll make hell nervous. Oh, some of you should have been dead and gone. But because of his mercy and because of his grace, we're able to stand here clothed in our right mind. Oh, somebody shout, I got a praise and I got to get it out. I said, I got a praise and I got to get it out. I can't take this praise home with me, but something on the inside. Come to give him glory. I come to give him honor. I come to give him praise. I didn't come to ask for permission, but with everything that's on the inside, God will give you glory in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You may have your seats, man, in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Listen, we are grateful, man, and we're thankful. Let's put our hands together for the Philippian praise team. Amen. Leading us into worship, as well as the band as well. We thank God for them and their faithfulness, uh, allowing their gift to be used for the glory of the Almighty God. We definitely appreciate uh, your presence being here uh, to Bishop Jones, Elder Jones, uh, in their absence there in Orlando, Florida. And so we are grateful for them uh, as well. I want to thank God for my wife, Lestasha Jones, as well. And we just have just a few things here. And this is for those of you that are, are, are part of Philippian. Uh, we're getting ready for uh, our first uh, Philippians pageant. All right? We're going to call it Miss and Junior Miss Philippian pageant. Come on, put your hands together for that. And so... 
any ladies that are uh, 15 and, and older, all right, maybe you have a crown, had a crown, lost a crown, or maybe you want another crown, right? We want to invite you to uh, the competition. You will be coached on pageantry modeling and different things of that nature. It will take place on September the 10th in the Multipurpose Center. Uh, for registration, there is no fee. All we need to know is if you want to show up uh, and be a part. And so if you're interested in that, immediately after the service, please see Sister Shamika wave your hand for me real big. Rip, rip, there it is. There it is. Okay, there we go. Y'all please see Sister Shamika too on my left, also to your right. Uh, just to echo uh, what Sister Cheryl was saying, we definitely need your help uh, with preparing the backpacks and things for our children. Uh, we've already sent out the postcards for the community behind us. And God has been blessing us in that area to not just be a blessing for people that are in the building, but for the neighborhood that is behind us. And so we've sent out postcards, I think, in about a 50-mile radius. Uh, so it's going to be a citywide event. So if you have family members, nieces, and nephews that you know uh, need things for going back to school, you want to bring them here uh, on August the 13th. Uh, 11.30 a.m., we'll kick off with the walk. Uh, but we want to make sure that we are a blessing uh, to you. Also, another date, very quickly here, July the 28th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., uh, they're going to be having a homeowner's assistance event. Uh, this event is going to take place at 8793 Sabal Road. And so if you are a owner of a home and you need assistance, and it said on the flyer that you don't even have to be behind on the bill, but you still can get assistance, we want to make sure that you come out uh, on July 28th. That's at 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and the people that are putting this on are two people that we have here with us today. Uh, and that's uh, Angie Nixon. Let's put our hands together for her. Angie, I need you to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as well as Tracy Davis. And so both of them are combining uh, together to put that on. And so we want to make sure that uh, we support them. Uh, last but not least, very quickly here, uh, Angie Nixon is one that was brought up in this church with us. Uh, and so I remember her, of course, being a young lady. And God is using her uh, in the city. And so she's a representation or representative. She was elected to the Florida House uh, in 2020. And now she's seeking for re-election in a redrawn district in District 13. Uh, and so I want you all to remember that tomorrow is the last day that you can register to vote in the primary election. The election will be Tuesday, August the 23rd. All right. Come on, put your hands together one more time. I'm going to ask those of you that have your Bibles that if you would turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. We also want to make sure that we keep Sister Phyllis Smalls in prayer as well. Uh, the homegoing services of her husband will be Saturday, uh, July the 30th at 11 a.m. here at Philippian. And so all ushers and those that are available, we're asking that you would come serve uh, on that Saturday. All right, once again, Matthew chapter 28. For those of you that are watching online, God bless you. Make sure that you type. Make sure you talk back to us in that comment section. Now to let us know that you are here. Matthew 28. I'm going to begin reading at verse 18. And the Bible reads, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even until the end of the world. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. And if you would please travel with me to verse number 8. And it says, But ye shall receive power, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria 
and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Heavenly Father, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We pray, Lord, that today that no flesh would glory in your presence, but that you would get all the glory and all the honor today. We pray that the word of God would have a free course to minister to the hearts and minds of your people. Help us, Lord, to be in a posture to receive. We bind everything that comes to be a distraction to us. But let our minds be clear. Let our hearts be clear. Let our spirits be open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. We pray against the hand of the enemy. You told us in your word that no weapon that's formed against us that it shall not prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment that we shall condemn. And God, we stand upon the precepts of your word that lets us know that even when the enemy comes in like a flood, that like a flood you will lift up a standard against him. We thank you for victory, God, in every area of our life healing and miracles God let it set in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus we bind the spirit of heaviness bind the spirit of slothfulness God but allow us to be attentive today in Jesus name and everyone who believes ought to say amen amen listen I want to minister to you uh, today uh, from the simple thought under attack under attack as I've been paying attention to the things that are happening in our world and our nation, even as it pertains to uh, the body of believers, those of us that are believers in Christ, uh, it's been my conviction that we are now under serious attack. God began to lead me in a study that led me here to uh, the book of Matthew chapter 28, where we see Jesus echo these words that all power was given unto him in heaven and in earth. It would be this Matthew, this writer, who will begin to pen one of what we would consider to be the synoptic gospels, along with Mark and Luke. It would be this Matthew that will begin to speak to you and I about the fulfillment of Jesus Christ and how he fulfills the law with his life. As many times as I've read the book of Matthew, those words in the book of Matthew has never been more evident or important than the season that we're in now. Because we've entered a season where those on the outside will begin to try to take us back to the law of Moses when God clearly speaks in his word to let us know that it was all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. This is a season, church folk, where you can't shout your way through. Uh, church membership is not enough because you go to church on Sunday morning and you know your pastor's name. But this is a season where you got to get in that word of God for yourself and you got to know what you believe and why you believe it. And baby, you got to be ready to stand on it despite the persecution that may come your way. I believe that the church itself is entering back into the days of even when Apostle Paul was trying to establish churches in the New Testament and there was those even of the Jewish sect that would begin to rise up to try to take the people of God back to the very thing and the reason that God had sent Christ for. And that was to bring us to a place of a new covenant and a new commandment. We'll find that in Matthew chapter 5, when we look at the life of Christ, he'll begin to say that, you know, that's not a smallest part of the law will pass away as long as heaven and earth remain. He says, until it be fulfilled. And if you continue to read in verse 18, he'll let you know that I am the fulfillment of the law. It will be this Christ that tells us in Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, around verse 28, I believe, through about verse 31. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heaven laden. And he says, and I will give you rest. Letting the Jewish people know that you can't find rest in a day that you set aside, but true rest can only be found in the one that fulfilled the law. No doubt the people of God, we're not saying that the law is destroyed. We're just trying to tell you that Jesus completed the thing. Do me a favor here. I hope you sit next to somebody that you like and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. He completed the thing. He, he, he did what we could not do in the flesh. God sent his son Jesus to show us what completeness looked like. And Jesus, he would complete this thing with his life. And it was culminated on Calvary's hill. As I begin to look at the life of Christ and understand that we are under attack, I begin to look at Matthew around chapter 28 and I begin to look at the ending times of Jesus' life. And I notice that even Christ himself was under attack. 
Most of us, in a one way or another, if you begin to look at your life, there's some of you that are here now. You look good, you smell good, you know how to look churchy. Sometimes churchy folk just know how to look churchy. We know how to look like we got it all together. But even though you look churchy, you look good, you look like you got it all together, you got a smile on your face. There are some of you that are sitting in the pew now. Your life is under heavy attack. If we gave you the microphone, you'll say, Jones, you ain't lying. If I told you some of the things that were on my plate right now, if I told you some of the things uh, that I was facing right now, you will echo what I'm echoing and tell me that my life is under attack. There are some of us, our families are under attack. Your daughters are under attack. Your sons are under attack. There are some of you, your marriage is under attack. Your very health is under attack. You went to the doctor and the doctor told you something that he's seen and they messed around and rocked your faith. Y'all forgive me here. I'm about to feel the prophetic on me. I'm like Isaiah. Isaiah said, whose report will you believe? Well, I am inclined to believe the report of the Lord. I'm not trying to tell you that what the doctor told you was a lie. I'm just trying to tell you, you just got to have faith in spite of what you read on a piece of paper. You got to have faith in spite of what the report of the doctor said because I believe that God is still a miracle worker. You know, he didn't just stop working miracles. God just didn't wake up one day and say, I'm done working miracles. I still believe in the miracle working power of the almighty God. I still believe that he can do things that cannot be explained by man. It cannot be explained by your intellect. I still believe that God can make moves in our life that when you step back the only thing you can tell from is that if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side I wouldn't have made it I wouldn't have survived I wouldn't be here right now I still believe y'all know I've been on that still believe for about three weeks now look at your neighbor and look them dead in the eye and say neighbor I still believe I don't know what your name is I don't know what your mama name is I don't know what family you belong to but I come to echo that I still believe God I don't know what the White House gonna do I don't know what Congress gonna do I don't know what the Senate gonna do I don't know what the house gonna do but I come to let the world know that I still believe God I don't care what you see on the television or what you read in your newspaper baby I still believe God you got to be so convicted in your mind that even when hell is breaking through in your life you got to look yourself in the mirror and say Lord I still believe I still believe you can work it out for me I still believe that you are a deliverer I still believe that you can turn this state around I still believe you can fix my broken heart I still believe tell some Somebody. I still believe, baby. I know, I know you heard different reports, but I still believe it's on there. Some of us that we are under attack. Your family is under attack. Your marriage is under attack. Your health is under attack. Sometimes your finances is under attack. But I come to let the body of Christ know that in this season, even the church is under attack. They come to attack us because of what we believe. They say, you know what? You can't love me and disagree with me at the same time. I say, well, I guess Jesus didn't love nobody because when Jesus showed up, he definitely didn't agree with everybody but he most assuredly loved everybody don't you let America run you crazy I can disagree with you and still love you don't you let America put you in the box to try to get you to co-sign on something that God hadn't co-signed on in his word I know we live in a council culture but how can you cancel somebody that God has called look at your neighbor say neighbor you can't cancel me when God is my foundation you can't cancel me when God is my keeper because if you cancel me today God is still going to keep me tomorrow. You got to know what side your bread is buttered on. I don't care if you got the world against you. My provider, my protector, my shield and my buckler. He still sits high and look low. Y'all forgive me here. I'm about to feel like preaching. Look at your name and say, neighbor, you can't counsel me when God has called me. And so you and I got to understand that in this season, well, even the church world is under attack. And so that's family, that's health, that's marriages, that's finances, that's the church. And even, don't miss this here, even our communities are under attack. And this is where you and I can play your part. Look at your neighbor and say, play your role. It does us no good to sit back and talk about how bad our community is and you ain't going to raise your own kids. Oh, um, y'all forgive me here. I'm going to say it again. It does no good for you to sit back and talk about how bad it is. And here you are, your kids raising all kind of hell. Oh, no, no, no. You got the first start in your own home. Uh, you got the first start looking at your own baby. Uh, you ain't surprised. You got to be able to raise that child up in the right way. Y'all forgive me here, but I'm going to talk this thing like I feel. If you're waiting for America to raise your kids, you might as well die now. If you're waiting for America to instill identity in your children, you might as well die now. I know you say sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost 
house but you got to pour into that next generation you got to let your baby know who they are you got to let your baby know the right path to take and the things that they should stand for but you can't sit back and watch the community die and you ain't gonna raise your own baby y'all forgive me here I'm about to get messed up somebody ain't gonna come back next week but I'm gonna preach this thing like I feel oh holy ghost help me here y'all pray for me and pray for me now how in the world you got your baby listening to the same music you listening to and you can't control the lyrics here you are got your baby shaking and dancing to everything you shaking and dancing to and your baby five and six and seven years old and you think your baby gonna know the difference here your baby is listening to damnation from the time that they are five years old by the time they 15 you ain't gonna be able to control them I'm trying to tell you that we gotta start taking control in our own community if you are a parent if you are a mother if you are a father it is your responsibility to shield your child from some of the foolishness that may go on y'all forgive me here it's a little early y'all please have your seats We live in a day and time where a baby can recite a rap song and don't know the ABCs. They don't know their colors. Okay, don't, don't tell me your baby can't learn. Let me get out of here. So we've been under attack. I'll need a few minutes here. Some of you deal with being under attack. Don't miss this here. Being under attack will send a signal that, baby, we are in war. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're already in war. Yeah, some of us, we're contemplating sitting on the side, but you are already in war. Now, when you look at the fact, don't miss this here, that you are under attack. Remember that sometimes in our lives, sometimes it is the attack that is a sign that elevation is about to hit your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the attack is not a bad thing. The attack is a sign that elevation is getting ready to hit your life. When we look at the life of Christ in the book of Matthew, I don't have enough time to turn to it. But there are certain signs that will let you know that you are under spiritual attack. There's some of you, you're looking at your life and you're trying to figure out, why in the world are they forsaking me? Why are they denying me? Why are they betraying me? As I look at the life of Christ, those were the three things that happened because elevation was coming. Y'all forgive me, I feel the prophetic on me here. Y'all don't mind helping me prophesy here. I need, I need your help because maybe your neighbor ain't listening to me. Look your neighbor in the eye and shout, elevation is coming. I don't know. I don't know if you know it or not, but I believe that elevation is getting ready to hit your life. And you got the hell in your life to prove it. Uh, you got the trouble surrounding your life to prove it. And so when Jesus got closer to his elevation, the first thing you're going to find is that his disciples will begin to forsake him. They will begin to deny him. And even Judas will begin to betray Jesus for the 30 pieces of silver. But I'm trying to tell somebody that elevation is getting ready to hit your life. You so focused on the betrayal. You so focused on the pain until you can't see the elevation. I need you to look just a little bit higher and understand that elevation is getting ready to hit your life, baby. When you are under the season of attack, just before that season of elevation, don't miss this here. You got folk that you don't know that will give you more respect than folk that done seen what you done been through. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that said, you know what? I've been through some things in my life and the folk that should be supporting me, the folk that should be pushing me. I can't even find them, but I got folk that don't even know my name that's going to tell me I can make it. I'm trying to tell you that, baby, you're in the season of elevation. You got folk that don't know you, but they know how to push you. And so I come to encourage the body of Christ today that it doesn't matter the attack that you may be under. Every attack that's sent from the pits of hell is a sign that God is getting ready to take your life to a whole nother level. Look at your neighbor and shout, get ready for a brand new level. I know, I know you thought you was going to stay here all day long. I know you thought your life wasn't going to get no better. I know you thought that God had closed the book on your life but I come to echo that the devil is a liar that God's got better for you. God's got more for you. There's another chapter that God desires to write in your life. Now remember when you and I are under attack, slow down Jones, I feel like preaching in here. How about you when you and I are under attack, look at your name and say, neighbor, whatever you do, keep your composure. Oh, y'all forgive me here. That was the wrong neighbor. Turn to another neighbor. Say, neighbor, whatever you do, you got to make sure that you keep your composure. Because some of y'all been acting like a straight out. I can't talk like I want to. You ain't got to say amen because I don't want you to tell on yourself. But there's some of us in here, you've been under attack and you've been attacking. I feel like talking. They've been hitting you and you've been hitting back. But I just come to be the voice of reason in your spirit to let you know that, baby, when you are under attack, you got to know how to keep your composure. The Bible say, don't you be overcome with evil, but you got to learn how to overcome 
some evil with good. There's some seasons in your life. Uh, you can't talk it out. You can't walk it out. You got to sit down and let the Lord fight your battle. There's sometimes you got to get your mouth off of it. Look at your neighbor and say, God, say, shut your mouth. I feel like talking in here because you've been trying to take matters uh, into your own hand. Don't you send uh, that text message? Don't you make uh, that phone call? God say, in this season, I need you to sit down, shut up, and behave yourself. Hold it I only need a few minutes here, so now, so now when I look at the life of Christ, I only need a few minutes here. Well, when I look at the life of Christ, Christ was one that, that held his composure. He was under attack, but he held his composure. He held his composure so until even Judas, the one that was going to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver, and Jesus knew he was going to sell him out. Jesus still prayed over the bread, broke the bread, and he still fed Judas. Can't you imagine how saved you got to be to feed somebody that you know going to stab you in the back? I'm talking about Jesus now, y'all. Y'all forgive me here, but he shows us that you got to be able to hold your composure. Why, young Joe, should I hold my composure? Because whatever the enemy means for bad, lean over and tell your neighbor, God's going to let it work together for your good. I know you can't see it now and you can't feel it now, but I come to prophetically declare that every assigned thing that the devil has tried to place on your life, God said, I'm going to turn it and let it work together for your good. I don't need a few minutes here. I promise y'all I'm going to try to preach in a minute. Oh, we gotta understand, don't miss this here. Uh, that when you and I, when you and I, when you and I are under attack, don't miss this here. A lot of times you're under attack because, baby, you are under an assignment. Now, remember in Matthew chapter 18 and Matthew chapter 28, Jesus gives a universal assignment. He said, Listen, all power is given unto me. Now, that power is an authoritative power, a power to make change, a power to do whatever he wills whenever he gets ready. But he begins to speak to the disciples, he begins to tell them, He said, Listen, I need you to go into all the nation, go into all the world. I need you to teach this and do this and baptize and do all of that. What Jesus does, he gives them an assignment. And some of us have failed to realize, uh, preach like you feel, bald-headed preacher. Holy Ghost, help me preach. Some of us have failed to realize uh, that God has given you an assignment. Look at your neighbor and shout, assignment. I know, I know, because sometimes we've been so church uh, until we think that the only assignment you can have uh, is in the building. But my God is bigger than the building. I don't care what building you be. God is bigger than the building. And so you got people that's sitting in the pews uh, that don't realize that they're on a Assignment because they ain't no preacher and they ain't no pastor and they ain't no apostle and they ain't no prophet and they ain't no minister but throw your head back and shout the devil is a liar baby I'm on assignment there's some of you your assignment is bigger than this church there's some of you your assignment is your family your assignment is your community look at your name and say baby I am on an assignment and so he tells him, he tells him about the universal assignment, but there is a, an individual assignment for each of us. Now remember, when you and I begin to go through that season of elevation, when you begin to walk in the assignment that God has ordained for your life, you got to understand that you will become a target. There's some of you, you have failed to realize that the reason that the burners are turned up in your life is because now you have become a target of the enemy. Now remember, whenever the devil is targeting your life, preach like you feel, whenever the devil is targeting your life, he's never targeting you because of where you've been. He's always targeting you, trying to stop you from where you're going. Church folks on the window shout, God, so I'm going to shout by myself. Of the very fact that the burners have been turned up, the very fact that you got attacked on the left and attacked on the right and attacked in the front, attacked in the back, attacked on the job, attacked in your family, it is a sign that the devil is trying to stop what's coming. Look at your neighbor and shout, I got something coming. I don't know when, I don't know where, but I got so much hell going on in my life. So God's got to have a better chapter for me. There has to be another chapter for me. So you and I got to understand that when you become a target Oh, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy is trying to stop you from what's coming. Now write this down. I don't have enough time to read it. It's going to be Luke chapter 22 uh, and verse 31. Jesus began to tell Peter. He said, listen, he said, Satan have desired that he may sift you as wheat. He said, but Peter, who? he said, but I done prayed for you. Oh, look at somebody and shout, he done prayed for you. He said, but I prayed for you that your faith fail not. When I began to investigate the scripture, I understood that the devil was attacking Peter because he was trying to stop what was coming. He wasn't worried about Peter's past. He was trying to destroy Peter's future. And so you and I must come to the understanding that whenever your life is under attack, don't miss this here, the devil is always trying to stop what is coming. Whenever you are under attack, that simply means that you have now officially become a threat. Look at your neighbor and say, I may not look like much, but baby, I'm a threat. And I'm so much of a threat until the devil is trying to take my faith. I'm so much of a threat until he's trying to take my sanity. But the devil is a liar. I don't care about the attack. I don't care about the threat because I got something on the 
inside of me that's going to make me live when I should die. I got something on the inside of me that just won't let me give up. I know you thought I was going to run home and close the door, but baby, I am still here. Y'all forgive me here, but if there's somebody in this building that's been through some hell in your life, I dare you to throw your head back and shout, baby, I'm still here. After everything that I've been through, after everything that they said about me, after every trap that they tried to set in my life, Somebody shout, I'm still here. Now I know for some of y'all that ain't shouting music, some of y'all have been through enough hell, you ought to be giving God a shout right about now. I'm talking about the folk that God has brought through hell and back, and you are still here with your right mind, with your shout, with your praise, with your faith, with your crazy self. Somebody shout, I'm still here. All they need. All they need. A few minutes, I promise. I'm going to try to get out of the way. I'm almost ready, David. So Jesus says, he says, he says, now all power, all power has been given unto me. He said, in heaven and in earth. That's the elevation. The elevation was that Christ would now begin to walk in all power. And one thing I love about Christ is that Christ ain't never been stingy. Yeah, he, he took a little last lunch with two fish and five loaves and fed over 5,000 folk in the middle of a desert, tell your neighbor, Jesus ain't never been stingy. Y'all don't mind me talking like I feel. He ain't never been stingy. And so when he gets the power in Matthew chapter 28, because he ain't stingy, he tells them, he said, I need you to go to the city of Jerusalem and, and I need you to tarry. I need you to wait because I'm going to send something. And, and what I'm going to send going to bless not just your life, but it's going to bless your baby's life and your baby's baby's life. And it's going to bless them that are far off. He said, I need you to go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Now y'all have to forgive me here because they don't preach about the Holy Ghost much, but I'm still a Holy Ghost preacher. I still believe in the power of the spirit. Oh, that's why the Bible says that it's not by power nor by might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And so I come to remind somebody that the Holy Ghost is still real. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor! I don't know if you know it or not, but the Holy Ghost is still real. I didn't want to call him Holy Spirit. I meant to call him Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, I'm a little old school. I was brought up in this thing. You know, when you talk about the Holy Ghost being real, I ain't talking about you speaking in tongues. I ain't talking about your shout and your dance. Somebody shout, the Holy Ghost is bigger than that. When Jesus gave them the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, baby, they begin to die for the gospel. They say, if you're going to kill me, go ahead on and kill me. But what's on the inside just won't let me deny Jesus. Look at somebody and shout, I still believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. And so the Bible says, I promise I'm almost ready to go home here. And the Bible says, listen here, Jesus tells him, he says, listen, I need you to go unto the city of Jerusalem. You're going to find this in the book of Luke. He'll say, go to the city of Jerusalem and tear it there until you be endued with power. By the time you get to Acts chapter 1, Jesus is already risen from the dead and he began to speak to his disciples. The Bible says, over 40 days, he showed infallible proofs. That simply means that Jesus got up from the grave and then he did things to th so that they would know that he was the very one that died on the cross. You know that's something you got to prove. Look at your neighbor and say, you know that's something you got to prove. You just can't tell me you're going to die and get up in three days and don't show me no proof. Jesus understood that. And so what Jesus did is that when he got back up after three days, he didn't just run back up to his father's house. But the Bible says for 40 days, he began to show himself among them. He said, listen, I need you to see the holes in my... It ain't Jesus bad? He then rose from the dead and left the holes in his hand just so you can know it was him. I feel like preaching in here. And so for 40 days, he began to show himself of infallible proofs. That's how we got the gospel today. That's why you got to watch folks trying to tell you that the Bible is a lie. I dare you to look back at them and tell them you a liar. How in the world do you think we got here? It's because Jesus for 40 days, he showed those men that I am the one that died on that cross. That's why they were willing to die uh, in Roman Colosseums because they had seen something that folk couldn't take from them. Look at your neighbor and say, baby, I done seen something that the world can't take from me. And so Jesus he tells him, he said, listen, after 40 days, he said, I need you to go back to Jerusalem. He said, and now in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, listen, he said, now you're going to receive power. Look at your neighbor and shout power. He said, go back now. He said, you're going to receive. He said, you're going to receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Don't miss this here because this power is different from the power that's mentioned in Matthew chapter 28. You got to look at the Greek to find out that even though it's the same English word, the meaning is slightly different. Uh, because when you get to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, you're going to find that that word power in the Greek is called dunamis. Somebody shout dunamis. 
Now, dunamis power is a little bit different than what Christ had in Matthew 28. That dunamis power, uh, we kind of get it from our English word dynamite. Look at your neighbor and shout dynamite. I'm about ready to blow something up right now. Look at your neighbor and shout dynamite. I don't know if you know what you're carrying, but baby, there's an explosion on the inside of you when you got the Holy Ghost on the inside. That's what he gives them what they call the dunamis power. Now, when you look up the word dunamis power, preach like you feel, bald-headed preacher. The dunamis power is the power of the way you have been not only empowered, but it's the ability to do something that you could not normally do. I'm going to say that again. The Holy Spirit is the power and the ability to do something that you could not normally do. Now, I don't need everybody to shout. I only need about 50 of y'all in here that say, Jones, I believe that's me because I done survived some things that, baby, I would not have survived if it wasn't for the Spirit of God on the inside. I done been through some things that, baby, should have destroyed me because of the Spirit of God on the inside. Somebody shout, baby, I I got power. It is a power. It is a miracle working power. It is a power that you can't even explain. You don't even know how you kept your composure. You don't know how you kept your mind. You don't know how you kept your smile. You don't know how you still made it. But look at your name and say, baby, I believe I know how. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit. It's called that dunamis power. And so I come to remind the body of Christ that in this season, baby, you got power. Y'all forgive me here because I feel like preaching my way out of here. David, if you ready, baby, I'm ready just to send these folk home. Look at your name and say, good night, church. Oh, I just come to tell of the body of Christ. Y'all remind me preaching like I feel here. I came all the way from Oak Leaf Orange Park uh, down here to this church on the north side uh, just to remind the body of Christ uh, that, baby, you got power. Uh, now, if you want to help me preach this thing like I feel, uh, I need you to turn to a neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, you got power. Uh, I didn't say you had more money. Uh, I didn't say you had more intellect. Uh, I didn't say you had more friends. Uh, I just come to remind you uh, that, baby, you got power. Uh, I didn't come to tell somebody it, huh? that your trial will be over tomorrow huh? and that it's going to be over by noon huh? but I came to remind you huh? that you got power huh? what does it mean young preacher huh? to have that power huh? the power of the Holy Ghost huh? I'll tell you what it means huh? it means they can throw all hell at you huh? but when the storm is over huh? you'll still be standing huh? when the lie is over huh? you'll still be standing huh? they drug your name through the mud huh? but you'll still be standing huh? because there is a power down on the inside. But I heard Jesus say, when he began to talk to Peter, he said, upon this rock, he said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I dare somebody to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil is getting ready to lose again. The assignment of the enemy is getting ready to fail. The plot of the enemy is getting ready to spoil. Now you are ain't got to wait huh, for the battle to be over. Huh, but if you're crazy enough, huh, I dare you to shout now. Huh, I dare you to shout victory. Huh, I dare you to shout power. Huh, because that's what you're getting ready. Huh, you're getting ready to walk in. Huh, can I preach this thing, y'all? Huh, just like I feel. Huh, see, the devil don't want you to walk. Huh, he don't want you to walk in that power. Huh, because when you and I begin to walk huh, in the power of the Holy Ghost, huh, when you wake up in the morning, huh, you begin to say huh, that this this is the day uh, that the Lord has made, uh, and I shall rejoice uh, and be glad in it. Uh, I don't care what hell uh, I may face in my day. Uh, it's still the day uh, that the Lord has made. Uh, when you begin to walk in your power, uh, you begin to tell yourself, uh, for we know uh, that all things work together uh, for the good of those uh, that love the Lord. Uh, look at your name and say, neighbor, uh, it's working in your favor uh, every bad day. Uh, Every down day, every ugly day, every lie they told, every knife in your back, it's working together for your favor. If you believe it, you want to throw your head back and show power. So I got power. I got power. See, when you begin to realize that you got power, when the enemy is attacking your baby, you will lay hands on your baby. You will lay hands. Uh, on your grandbaby uh, and you begin to tell the devil uh, back back devil uh, you got to loose my baby uh, loose my son uh, loose my daughter uh, loose my grandbaby uh, loose my mind uh, loose my finances uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say use the power
power. For I heard the Bible say that there is power of life and death. It's in your tongue. Jesus began to say that if you will speak to the mountain and tell the mountain, be thou removed, and you shall not doubt. It's got to move. Look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, it's got to go. It's got to move. If you believe it, throw your head back and shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. You're more than an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. You are a child of God. Born with power. Shout power. Shout power. Shout power. Shout power. Somebody shout power. You may have your seats. Y'all forgive me. Jesus. few minutes I found the problem Jesus I found I found the problem some of y'all too scared look at your neighbor say neighbor don't be too scared the devil got some of y'all so locked up you won't even speak victory in the church you, you, you know you scared when you can't even open your mouth to shout for victory and you got home court. If, if you can't say it on home court, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you let the devil take this from you. Don't you let him take your praise. Don't you let him take your shout. Don't you let him take your dance. Don't you let the devil take it. You can't do it if you're scared. There are times, priests like you feel, young Jones. I only need a few minutes. You got to be so locked in till you just got to be crazy enough to try it out. Look, look at your neighbor and say, are oh, you crazy enough just to try it? Just to try it out. You, you, you just got, maybe you're sitting down and you're still in doubt, but you got to be crazy enough. I need a few minutes. Lord, help me preach. There was a man by the name of Elijah. He was the understudy of another man by the name of Elijah. And the Bible says that when the master prophet died, Elijah with a J, excuse me, he was translated into heaven. That the understudy Elijah, he said, you know what? He, he said, he say, I, I want a double of what you got. He, he said, the anointing on your life is so strong. He said, he say, I just want double of what you have. The, the master prophet who knew God had worked with him mightily, he said, you asking for a hard thing now. Because I, I done done a whole lot of miracles. If you're trying to get double of what I got, I don't even know if they got that in heaven or not. Because God done used me so, so mightily. But he told the young understudy. He said that if you see me taken up in the chariot, God's going to give you what you asked for. The Bible says that when the chariot of God came down to pick up the master prophet, Elijah with the J, that the understudy, he saw the chariot. And he says, alas, master, the chariot of the almighty God. The Bible says that as the master prophet was taken up, he would work his miracles through a cloth called the mantle. And when God caught the master prophet up, the mantle that he used to use to work the miracles, it says, <sighs> y'all forgive me. It says that the mantle dropped. Y'all forgive me. There's some of you here, you're in a season in your life. And God said a mantle is dropping on you. Don't you miss your mantle. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you miss your mantle. There's some of you, you've had patriots to die in your family. 
and the mantle on your family is dropping to you. Don't you miss your mantle. Y'all forgive me, I'm back. That's just a quick word for somebody. I promise I'm back to my text. So the mantle drops and he gets the mantle in his hand. Now he remember what the master prophet said. The master prophet said, if you see me take it up and you get the mantle, then you got what you had. But, but he was crazy enough. Take it up, he was crazy enough. And so what the young understudy did, he went to the Jordan River because God always worked in the Jordan River. He, you know, God loved to play in the Jordan River. And so when the master prophet had gone and the young understudy, he now has the mantle. He goes to the Jordan River and he got to get back across the Jordan River. He takes that same mantle. He said, now where is the God of my master? The Bible said he struck the river and the Jordan began to open up. What are you saying, young preacher? Is that the young understudy had enough nerve to try it. There's some of you, God is going to show you a side of him that you have never seen because you're going to be crazy enough to put God to the test with your faith. I don't care if you ain't never seen it. I don't care what they told you in the streets, but if you got enough faith to believe, you can put God to the test and God will show you that he is real. Every head bow very quickly. Father, there's someone in here, God, that's doubting you. They're doubting your ability, and they're doubting your power. You didn't give us room to judge, God, so we don't judge anyone. But we pray that they would have enough faith to put you to the test. And as they put you to the test by faith, we pray, Father, that you would show them your hand like they have never seen it before. In Jesus' name. And somebody ought to say, amen. Come on, Zion, put those hands together one more time. Everyone standing that can, we're getting ready to let you go home. Y'all know me, I try not to keep you longer than what I have to. But I want you to remember that you have power. And that power is not a power to shout over this church. Not just a power to speak in a heavenly language. But it is literally the power to survive the attacks of life and the attacks that the enemy may place on you. It is the Holy Spirit that is on the inside that gives us that power to stand. You don't need more money. You need to be reminded that you got power. It's not about a new connection. You need to be reminded that you have power. And because of that power, you are going to walk in victory. I need you to remember that when you are under heavy attack, it is a sign that elevation is around the corner. Jesus went through the forsaking, the denial, the betrayal people saying give us Barabbas and y'all kill Jesus he went through all of that but you got to get to Matthew chapter 28 to see what he received it's impossible for God to let you go through hell and not reward you and so them tears you're crying it's a reward for you the pain that you are experiencing it's a reward for you Jesus in Matthew 28 he said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth not only does Christ receive all power. But in the book of Philippians, when Paul picks up his pen, he says, you know, it's going to come a time when every knee got to bow and every tongue got to confess that that same Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. The Roman writers say, if we can call on that name, whether you're Jew or Greek, thou shalt be saved. Because he went through the attack, y'all, and he walks in his elevation. He got elevated so until the Bible says he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. And that he lives to pray for you and I. He lives to intercede for you. It's amazing. Sometimes Jesus prayed for us and we didn't even pray for ourselves. He said, Lord, that's my son. That's my daughter. They done got off course. They doing their own thing. But Lord, protect them. Don't let the enemy see his desire upon their life. Some of you should have been dead and gone. But Jesus was praying for you. He was interceding for you. That you can be right here, right now, with this moment, with an open mind and a clear conscience to be able to serve the Almighty God. Every head bow. I'm not going to keep you long. Every head bow. Good God Almighty. I feel salvation in here. While every head is bowed, I don't want to put you on the spot or embarrass anybody because some of you may feel that this is embarrassing. 
but if you were in here under the sound of my voice the Bible says the day that you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. The day you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. The day you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. No, I don't want to scare you. Jesus. If you're in here and you're not in a right relationship with Christ, maybe you used to be and you got away. Or maybe you've never acknowledged Christ as your Savior. Only thing I want you to do is gently put your hand up and put it back down. I'm not going to stay here long, but I want to give you an opportunity. I see your hand. I see your hand, sir. If you're in here, I see your hand, sister. If you're in here, I'm going again. I see your hand. I see your hand. Hey, Adabosha, come on. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I don't care what you got planned tonight. I don't care what you got planned this week. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. Praying about whether or not to say this because I don't want you to think that I'm trying to scare you into accepting Christ. The last time I felt like this, I was preaching at a Reigns Back of Lord. And at the end of me ministering at this Back of Lord, y'all, I try to keep things protocol. So when I minister at a Back of Lord, there's some things that I try not to touch because I realize that the family is there to celebrate their loved one. The Spirit of God dropped on me so heavy until I couldn't help but say what was on my heart. And in that moment, there was a warning issued out to everybody that was in that building to get their life right with Christ. It wasn't 24 hours later that a young man that was in the same building was dead. Not because he did anything wrong, but his time had ran out. I don't want to scare you. I'm just telling you that when I feel like I feel now, that sometimes death is intimate. Sometimes death is closer than what you want it to be. So the last time, if you are in here and you have not raised your hand, if you need your relationship with Christ restored, or if you want to acknowledge Christ as your Savior, I just need you to gently put your hand up and put it back down. I see you. I see you. While your head is bowed, I want to pray a prayer of salvation I am going to ask that you would repeat after me but remember don't get it confused God is going to hear every word you say and as we pray this prayer we're going to pray according to the word of God as a way for salvation for in the word of God it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with his mouth confession is made unto salvation today that relationship with Christ is going to be restored and if you have never acknowledged Christ today will be the best days of the rest of your life the Bible says that if any man be in Christ he is a new creature she is a new creature old things have passed away the whole old things have become new you're still gonna look the same you still gonna have on the same clothes but the Lord is gonna change something on the inside today say this with me say father I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I believe that he lived and died, spilled his blood on the cross for my sin. I believe that he was dead. He was buried. But on the third day, rose again with all power in his hand. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Baptize me. In the power of the Holy Ghost. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Zion, I just need one more thing from you. I need you to put those hands together for the salvation that is in this building, for the restoration that is taking place even now, for the healing that's moving in this atmosphere even now. God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for restoration. We thank you that we are the sheep of your pasture, that we are your people. We call you Savior. We call you Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. We thank you, Jesus, for mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for grace. Now, Heavenly Father, as we continue to pray, there's some of us that know you, but God, we're under attack from the enemy. Give us how to stand. 
we pray for strength, God, to keep our composure. God, if we be honest, sometimes it's hard to keep our composure. Sometimes it's hard not to hit back when they're hitting us. It's hard. It's hard not to take matters into our own hand. But, God, we just ask that you help us and give us strength to be able to keep our composure. Help us not to overtalk. Give us wisdom as to when to be silent. We know, God, that there are times we should speak, but God, there are times we need to be silent. So today we pray for spiritual wisdom. We pray for a spirit of discernment of the seasons to know when we should speak and when we should be quiet. Help us to accept by faith that elevation is hitting our life. Help us to accept by faith that because of the anointing and because of the power, we will survive the very attack that we are under now. Give us a praise, God, that the enemy cannot take. A worship that the enemy cannot take. Help us to be dedicated to you despite what we may face in this life and the storms of this life. We pray for every home. Pray for everyone that's represented here. Some have sicknesses in their body. But Lord, you said in your word that by the stripes of Christ that we are healed. And God, we stand on your word today asking that you will release miracles in this atmosphere. Healings that cannot be explained by man, but that we can only give glory unto God. And some of us, God, we're battling addictions and we're battling habits that's trying to rob us of our life. And so, God, right now we pray that every yoke of the enemy would be destroyed. That every habit and every addiction, God, would be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that we will begin to walk in the newness of life. And we'll be ever so careful to give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone who believes ought to say, Amen. Come on, Zion, while you take your seats, put those hands together one more time. And give your God a hand clap of praise. Now the Bible says that out of the mouth confession is made. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am born again. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Amen. Listen very quickly here. We're getting ready to dismiss. I'm going to ask that the deacons would please come on and take their place. We just have a few announcements before we get out of here. I think, I think this might be one of the good announcements. Remember, they do have those honey drippers today. All right? So we got them honey drippers across the street. Multi-purpose center. Right? Some of y'all hood born. You know, if you're from the hood, you, you, got, you had a candy lady or something. We ain't have to go to the corner store when you're in the hood. There's going to be somebody got candy in their trunk. Call it the candy lady. We want to see the candy lady. <laughs> candy lady probably could have retired off all that money. You be in the house stealing your mama money trying to go to the candy lady. <sighs> well, I wish I had a real church in here. Don't get quiet on me now. But we, we have honey drippers uh, to the multi-purpose center. Turn on right into your left. Oh they, oh, they brought them up front. Okay, so they got them up front. All right, so you can get to them. All right, I want to warn you ahead of time. Inflation done hit the honey drippers. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor. Inflation done hit them honey drippers. I tried to get one last week. They told me that price almost. <laughs> hey, hey. I thought it was two for one. Inflation has hit the money dripper. So just be ready when you get out there. All right. Listen, very quickly here. We, we talked about Angie Nixon. Wave your hand for me one more time, Angie. All right. Let us remember her. She's a representation of us. And for some of the needs in our community also, we want to thank God for Tracy Davis. It's good to see you again, Miss Tracy. Please wave your hand and let them see you. So y'all remember those names, Tracy Davis, uh, Angie Nixon. Let us not forget uh, on July the 28th, uh, they're going to have that event for those homeowners, both of them, uh, the way you can get assistance with your bills. I believe that's it. We talked about, uh, come on, Jonesy. All right, I think that's it. Everyone standing. Last but not least, for those of you that work the altar or you desire to work the altar with me, we are going to be meeting. Um, and we'll meet over here to my right and to your left. So if you've worked the altar before or if you desire to work the altar, I need to meet with you and meet me at the service. Last but not least, this coming Tuesday, the last about three or four Tuesday nights, we have been doing a ministry on doctrine because there's so much false doctrine going out in the land. And so God was preparing us before some demonstrators showed up last week. And so for those of you that were coming on Tuesday night, you were already prepared in the word of God of what we believe and why we believe it. If there's ever a time where you got to know it, you got to know it now. 
When we do Tuesday night, Tuesday night is not live. You got to come to the building. We'll be doing some more teaching. We get into the depths of this word of God. Y'all know me. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. A lot of times it's very difficult to get to those, those depths of doctrine on Sunday. But that Tuesday night slow down kind of pace, we're able to get into this word and, and, and just really dive into the scriptures. I know it ain't for everybody. Some of y'all like, I love Jesus. I'm going with Jesus. That's fine. I ain't coming. That's fine. I ain't trying to force you. But there's some of you that are hungry. If you're hungry, I need to see you Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m. Remember, come to the building. Everyone standing, for those of you that are watching online, allow God to touch your heart as to what to give. We don't have an amount today, but I'll always encourage that if the word has blessed you, if it was more on time, you want to allow God to lead you because God may encourage you to give an even greater seed than what you had prepared before. For those of you that are here, uh, we're going to ask that you would please follow the directions of the ushers as you give.